Thanks again all for joining. Hopefully you all noticed that in the calendar invite there are two documents attached as well as a link. I'm going to put the link in the chat box. Uh, the link is going to be to our folder that we created. Within that folder, it has uh, those documents as well as um, our notes, our ongoing agenda and notes, which we'll be using for the meeting today and other meetings as well. It also includes um, a copy of the Content Standards Review Committee report, which I'll explain that here in a moment. But just to make sure everyone's in the right meeting, uh, this should be the preschool through 12th grade ELA English Language Arts Standards Writing Committee. So congratulations. Uh, so happy to have all of you on this team. It's a very, very important team. So we'll be working fairly closely over the next six months to ensure that our ELA state standards are uh, rigorous, are aligned, and of course are really meeting the needs of our students and making sure that those basic skills are the most important things to be met. Um, and so I know a lot of the feedback we've gotten uh, from that report that I'll show you briefly in a moment, as well as from the ELA uh, group, has we have way too many standards. So um, I know we've been hearing that and I'm sure you all are, I'm seeing a lot of head nods in agreement of yes, there are way too many ELA standards. So I think the and work will really to make sure that we're paring that down into what is really the most critical thing that needs to be taught in each grade and not only taught but mastered by the end of that grade so that teachers can really focus on those um, and not feel overwhelmed with having 66 ELA standards as a you know elementary school teacher and then also knowing they have to teach all of the other content areas as well so um, Let's do our best to make sure that students have exactly what they need. Um, just wanted to kind of reiterate uh, the USBE staff who are on this committee aren't really on the committee. We are here to support. We're here to answer questions. We are not going to be the ones writing the standards. So that will be for all of you. So I just wanted to be really clear about that. That's not something that we will be. We're just here for your support uh, and to answer any questions. So. That is really the work of the committee, uh, hence your names will be uh, shown to the board, the Utah State Board of Education to make sure they are aware of all the great people that are doing this wonderful work too. So um, thank you so much. And we do actually have a previous board member on our committee, which is very exciting. Uh, Jennifer Gravitz is joining us. So uh, if you wanna give a little wave, it's uh, so nice to see you again, and we're really grateful that you were able to join our writing committee. Uh, and we certainly miss seeing your face. Oh. So it's nice to be able to see you in another round. Oh, well, thanks for letting me join you guys. Absolutely. So I think we'll start with introductions. And I know I've done this before, and it's been so fun to realize that your squares are not in the same order as my Brady Bunch squares. So instead, I will just go through the names as they are on my screen, and then you can introduce yourself. Please tell us your name, uh, which LEA or university you work for, as well as your title. So we can all kind of get to know each other so we, since we'll be working so closely together in the next few months. I'll start. My name is Sarah Whipke. I'm the Pre-K through 12 Literacy and Library Media Coordinator for the Utah State Board of Education. So happy to see all of you today. And then um, whoever is named Amy Guest, if you would please go next. Um, my name is Amy Sangren and I work for Canyon School District and I teach fifth grade. Thank you, Amy, so nice to see you. Uh, and then Amy, I'm probably gonna butcher your last name, Petrowski. You got it right, very good. <laughs> uh, so I'm Amy Petrowski. I am an assistant professor of English education at Utah State University. I'm in Vernal. I am based at USU's UNA Basin campus and I'm a former middle school and high school English teacher. Great, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jennifer Graham, do you wanna join us and, and share with everyone where you teach and all the things? Yeah, so Jennifer Gravett, I usually go by Jenny, but either's fine. And um, I teach in Weaver School District and I have spent 26 years in middle school, junior high. <laughs> So I have some issues, let's just say that. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Uh, 
Angie, uh, Angie Morales, if you would like to go next, please. Hi, I'm Angie Morales. I am the elementary ELA uh, supervisor for the Davis School District. So I'm happy to join with all of you brilliant minds. Thank you, Angie. Uh, Ashley Edis, will you go next? Yeah, I'm assuming, I, usually I'm not the only Ashley in the meeting, so um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'm the English curriculum specialist for Cache County School District and also work as an instructional coach and former middle school teacher. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, Charlotte McGee? So I'm Charlotte McGee. I, um, I work for Alpine School District and I am a district literacy specialist. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and then we have Christine Watcott from Provo. Yep, my name is Christine Watcott and I am the ELA curriculum specialist for Provo School District. Didn't unmute, my apologies. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Christine Elegante, do you wanna go next? Hi, I'm Christine Elegante. I'm a K-3 Literacy Specialist at USBE. Sorry, I've got to have my camera off. I'll get it on later. Thanks, Christine. Uh, Kali Lucas, would you like to introduce yourself next? I'm Kali Lucas. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Utah in educational psychology. And I too am a former middle school English teacher and reading teacher. I, I have to say, I'm really, truly impressed with all of the junior high, middle school uh, group we have here because I did a lot of my uh, admin hours in junior high and realized that was not. So <laughs> kudos to all of you, you guys are amazing. That's a tough space to work in. So you guys are great. Um, Connor Warner, if you'd like to go next, that would be wonderful. Hi, I'm Connor Warner. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Utah in the Urban Institute for Teacher Education. Um, and I'm also, I'm a former high school English teacher and social studies teacher. Great, thank you. Your expertise will be very helpful uh, based on some of the discussion that's, had, that's been had um, from the public and board meetings. So super happy to have you on the team, Connor. Uh, Sydney Carter, would you go next? Yeah, hi, I'm Sydney Carter. I'm the Assessment Development Coordinator at USBE. Um, previous to working here, I worked uh, in Davis School District with Angie, hey Angie, <laughs> and also in Ogden School District. I also was a middle school English teacher for five years, and then I moved down to elementary um, and did elementary and then also a literacy coach. So I love ELA and I'm glad to be with my people. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Uh, Duan, will you go next? Yeah, um, my name is Duan Coombs and I'm an associate professor of English at BYU um, and I work with the English Ed program and I am a former um, reading and English teacher in Provo School District. Great, welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, and then uh, Deborah Dean, do you go by Debbie, Deb, Deborah? What, what do you prefer? I go by Debbie. So. I'm Debbie Dean. I'm a professor at BYU in the English teaching program and also a former junior high and high school teacher. Fantastic. Uh, thanks so much. Ellen, will you introduce yourself next? Sure. My name is Ellen Bailey. I work for the Utah State Board of Education also, and I am in the Department of Special Education as a literacy specialist, but have, in my former teaching years, I worked in special education in K through five but also spend some time with some of the older students in the secondary realm. Great, thanks, Ellen. Uh, James Sparks, will you go next and let us know if you prefer James, Jim, Jimmy, or maybe some other form too that we don't know about. That would be wonderful. James, James is great. I'm from Washington County School District. I'm the secondary English language arts coordinator and new teacher induction coordinator here. My background's uh, high school English. Great, thanks so much for joining us. This is such a great group. Uh, Jamie, will you kindly introduce yourself next? Yeah, my name is Jamie Robinson and I am a preschool through second grade specialist at the Utah State Board of Education. And we worked very diligently in the past year to get our early learning standards that were passed. 
And so just wanted to let you know, like that's kind of my realm and I've worked anywhere from preschool to third grade. So my background is very elementary based. And Jamie, I think is actually being really kind. It actually took about three years for the preschool standards to be revised. So she was she was being kind, but yes, uh, they just recently finished up that work. So kudos to you and the team. That's great news. Jared, will you go next? Sure, I'm Jared Lizenby. I'm a preschool specialist at the State Board of Education. And you know, echoing some of the things that have been said before about um, admiring middle school and junior high teachers. Um, I've taught uh, 11 years in higher education. I've also taught preschool. The farther I get away from those two poles, the less comfortable I am. So I really admire those of you who, um, who teach in junior high and middle school. So and I'm excited to work with you here. So thanks. Thanks, Jared. Uh, Jennifer Salazar, will you go next? I'm Jennifer Salazar, and I actually am a director at the Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind. Um, my focus actually has been more preschool, kindergarten, and um, our focus is teaching language through listening. So I am the listening and spoken language director, and so our kids use hearing aids, cochlear implants, and Baja devices to access auditory information. Great. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm loving this diverse group. It's, it's just such a great group to work with. Uh, Julie, Clark and then Jessica Smith, will you go next? Yes, I am the K3 Literacy Specialist at, with USBE. And prior to this, I was an instructional coach at Weaver School District and also taught first and second grade. I am Jessica Smith. I am a preschool specialist at USBE. Um, I've been with the agency for almost three years. And before that, I was a special ed preschool teacher in Davis School District. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, Krista Hotelling next, and then Leslie Robinette. Hi, I'm Krista Hotelling. I'm a K-3 literacy specialist with USBE, um, and I'm excited for this whole standard process. First, it was a little uh, but now that we're into it, pretty excited. Um, I've always been with elementary, even as a teacher, special educator, and also as an assistant principal. So elementary is my realm. Kudos to junior high and high school. <laughs> I am Leslie Robinette. I'm the secondary English language arts specialist for Canyon School District, and I previously taught middle and high school. All right, thank you. Uh, if we could have Linda Chadburn and then Liz Williams after Linda. Hi, I'm Linda Chadburn. I am the preschool director with Alpine District, and I worked on that, the grand revision of the core, which was great. And uh, got 20, lot, 20 lots of years in preschool and kindergarten, mostly in special ed. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Liz Williams, the elementary ELA assessment specialist at the Utah State Board of Education. Prior to working for USBE, I spent several years in the Jordan School District as a kindergarten teacher. And then I originally hail from Virginia. So I taught first grade, third grade, fourth grade back in Virginia before moving out to Utah. So I'm excited to engage in this process with all of you. Thanks, Liz. If we could have, uh, let's see, Megan Lopez and then Megan Walker. All right, good morning and thank you. Um, I'm Megan Lopez from the Utah State Board of Education. I am the secondary English language arts assessment specialist. Prior to um, USBE, I I'm one of those middle school or language arts teachers. I taught middle school for 13 years. And um, yes, Jennifer, it, it instills a little something special in, in you when you're in a middle school that long. So um, thank you all for being here with us. Okay, I'm Megan Walker from Alpine School District. I am a district literacy specialist. I was um, formerly a teacher in first through third grades and an instructional coach, and I'm excited to do this. Thank you. If we could have uh, Naomi, if you would go next, and then uh, my list changed one moment, I think because I let someone else in, and then Rachel Lowry. Hi, I'm Naomi Watkins, secondary ELA specialist at USB and former middle school teacher, instructional coach, professor, and I don't know, like teaching kindergarten sounds like a nightmare to me. So 
it's all good thing there's like something for everybody, right? <laughs> Kindergarten is the great, in my opinion. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Lowry. I am a fifth grade teacher. I'm currently working at a charter school in Salt Lake City called Canyon Room Academy, but I've also worked in Davis District. And yeah, kudos to all of you middle school and high school teachers, elementary to where it's at. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Um, if we could have Samantha Harris and then uh, Susan Goldberg, that would be great. I am Samantha Harris. I am a district literacy specialist in Alpine School District. Um, my kind of specialty is K-3 literacy. Um, and then I'm doing my dissertation right now on comprehension. So that's been pushing my brain. And I'm Susan Goldsberry. I'm at Quest Academy in West Haven. I kind of wear the hat of lots of people because that's what you do at charters. And I had 30 years in the district before I came to a charter for one year when it's been seven. Thank you. We could have uh, Susan Henry and then Tracy Langley, if you could go next. Hi, I'm Susan Henry and I work for Canyon School District. I'm the uh, K-5 ELA lead at the district office. I work with Leslie Robinette, who's here. She's my uh, better half. And um, so together we have a team that works together on literacy. Before I was in the district office, I worked as a uh, coach in several schools and worked mainly in elementary. So my expertise is elementary. Thank you, Susan. And Tracy, I'm not sure if you're able to, I know you're kind of double, double meeting it right now. So if you're able to uh, introduce yourself, that's great. If not, we understand. Yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so my, our, our people are just coming in. So I'm, I'm about to start. Um, I'm running a PD this morning with some of my colleagues for proficiency-based learning. <laughs> so um, for ELA, but I'm the secondary ELA curriculum specialist in Granite. And um, I have 14 years of teaching experience, mainly in secondary schools. I taught AP, honors, gen ed, um, lots of random electives that I got told to teach <laughs> to over the years. So. Um, I have lots of experience with the standards and I'm, I'm really excited to, to be able to have this opportunity, but I'll be kind of like MIA for the next hour. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you are all incredibly busy people and I appreciate everything you're doing uh, for students and for educators. So I, I completely understand. Um, if we could have Trent and then Wendy and then Carrie go next, that would be wonderful. I'm Trent Mikesell. I'm a secondary ELA specialist in Nebo School District and have taught middle school, junior high, high school. Hi, I'm Wendy Dent. I work for Alpine School District as a district literacy specialist in elementary. I think we may have just lost someone. Uh, so maybe when, maybe when they come back on, we can have them introduce themselves. Um, I know sometimes internet connection, people have sent me some direct messages that their internet connection is a, a little unstable. I think we've all been there during 2020. So uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that it continues in, in 2021. So no, no worries at all. Thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, I am going to share my screen. And if you're already in, if you just recently came in, I'm going to copy and paste that folder back in the chat box. So that you all have access. This is the folder I'm uh, talking about. And if we could go to the ongoing agenda and notes and I'll make it larger because I know sometimes it can be really small on your screen. Is that a good size for everyone? If you could give me some nonverbal feedback, that'd be so helpful. All right, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. That's, that's a win. Um, I can't often see you while I'm presenting. So if you are giving me a nonverbal 
feedback. I may not be able to see it and I do apologize. So um, feel free to unmute and, and, and chat if you, if you have a question or anything. So uh, that was the welcome introductions. We already have a note taker chosen. Uh, thank you, Krista, for doing that. I did want to kind of reiterate the standard revision process. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly lengthy process and currently we're on step six. Um, so step six is really that we are organizing this committee, which of course is full of a very diverse group of stakeholders. And then this committee specifically will be reviewing the comments and recommendations from the review committee that has already met and came up with a report um, and then go ahead and revise the standards based on that. Um, so that's kind of your task at hand over the next, I say six months, knowing that it may take more or less, right? Um, so please know that that can be flexible. I, I certainly don't want you to think that if we are coming into month five and you're thinking, whoa, I don't think we can get this done in five months or in six months, we're gonna need another month. Please, please just let us know if you're feeling uh, crunched for time, we'd be happy to uh, make any, um, additional pieces that we need to have done. We're happy to do that and support you in any way that we can. Uh, we do try to stick to the timeline. It's the timeline that we've provided to the board. But like I said, if a change is needed, just shoot us an email and we'd be happy to make that change. Um, we, we don't want you to have to feel rushed. We want it quality better than uh, having to rush through things. So you can click on the link if you want on your own for the portrait of a graduate. The reason I'm bringing this up is the portrait of a graduate is really what um, our agency is moving towards as far as what would an ideal Utah graduate look like coming out of our K-12, now our pre-K-12 system. Um, I say that because we're, we are now, um, the board voted in 22, oh, sorry, sorry, Carrie. Um, the, the board uh, voted come into um, allowing the preschool standards instead of being sort of their own set of standards to be added on to each of the content areas. So currently Robert Austin is adding the preschool social studies standards in with his elementary P6 standards and we will be adding the preschool standards into our P through 12 ELA standards as well. <coughs> and Carrie, thank you so much for joining us. I know you kind of had to cut out and I know you're back now. If you'd like, it would be great if we could um, have you introduce yourself, tell us your name, uh, where you work, and then your role. That would be really great. Okay, sorry about that. I was having trouble connecting. I reconnected. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Herman. I work at um, the University of Utah and the Urban Institute for Teacher Education. Um, I work with elementary students in the student teaching program, and I also teach um, reading classes in Ed Psych. Thanks, Carrie, and welcome. Thanks, sir. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to briefly share with you, these are sort of mapped out into three different areas. We have mastery, autonomy, and purpose. Uh, as you can see in this, the key right here, um, we'll begin with the mastery section. And so I want you to be looking at these, specifically these four areas that I have on the screen right here, and be thinking about when we are going to make a revision to those standards, how well do those standards fit into this portrait, this guide that we're using to ensure that the characteristics our students are coming out of our system are having is really kind of included within our standards and it's sort of a smooth uh, transition so that it doesn't seem like this is something separate. This would be something that would tie into our standards. So I'm just gonna be quiet for a moment and give you a time to read those four and then I'll move down to the autonomy section. I'm sure as you're reading these, uh, you are thinking that much like I am, which of these areas our standards really match in well. Um, obviously academic mastery is a, a real easy one, um, but be thinking about that too. Which of these areas do we feel that ELA standards really do um, incorporate automatically within? And then I'll give you a minute to read the autonomy pieces.
and I'll scroll down to the last section here and give you a chance to read those. All right, hopefully you all got a chance to look at that. Um, this is really something that we are focusing towards and you'll notice down here below, we have sort of the development of competencies that if you wanna know a little bit more of that fine grain detail, you're welcome to visit um, our site, our competency-based site to learn uh, sort of a, a deeper knowledge of these, um, but you'll notice local implementation phase is beginning in this year that we're in right now. So. Um, You've probably seen it before. If you haven't, I just wanted to give you a little shot of that so you could kind of see what we're going towards as far as thinking about what we want Utah students to be graduating with, what specific uh, key areas and characteristics that we think would really make an ideal graduate from Utah. So moving back in, um, I did want to share one of the big things that uh, the board has voted on in the past few years to ensure that our standards are a little more aligned throughout the content areas is the organization. So I took this little blurb here from the math standards as they were one of the more recently adjusted set of standards. Um, all of our standards now need to have strands and standards. Um, so I just wanted to have you look at that little brief description of what it means to have them organized into strands and what those standards would mean and sort of how that looks. It's not that far off from how the ELA standards are already organized, knowing that we have sort of different strands and then the same standards underneath, but just wanted to give you an idea of what that looks like in another content area. So I'll give you just a moment to read this section here. I think the really important piece for me um, is this last little phrase here, all standards are essential for mastery. I think that's the thing we really wanna keep in mind when we're thinking about which standards do we wanna have in each grade and are they sort of the, um, these are the minimum most basic things that need to be mastered rather than trying to do all of the things that often we find teachers are unable to really enable students to master all of those standards because we have so many. Um, before we go into the report, I will add this suggestions from the field area. This is what we've heard over the years. Um, the field is really wanting a focus on those priority standards. Like I said, there are too many and they want to know what is sort of the minimum set of standards that need to be mastered at each grade level. They want to reduce and remove any redundancy. Um, as far as strands, they were thinking a reading strand, a writing stand, strand, and then a speaking and listening strand. They uh, requested that we put the science and social studies standards within those content area standards and not in the ELA standards. Um, also remove any confusing standards or rewrite if we feel that they're important, but they just need to be clarified. Uh, the reason for that is we hear often if this standard is written so poorly that the teachers don't understand what it means, they basically just don't teach it. So it's probably not one that's being taught even now. Um, really emphasizing that complex text and that there isn't enough uh, phonological awareness within our standards. Uh, we don't go to those advanced levels. So those are sort of the things we have heard from our stakeholders over the years. Let me just check the chat box here. Okay, great. So if we go to the report, Again, I'll make it bigger. We had a really great, great group of people to work with um, on the standards review committee. Um, they met twice. You can see um, we have five parent names from the House of Representatives, five from the Senate, um, and then we have seven from the State Board of Education. All of these people were nominated to be on this uh, review committee. Um, they reviewed the standards and gave uh, a, a set of overarching recommendations. And so 
we met twice. These are the things that they felt uh, the way we have this organized in the report is what are things that need to be added? What are things that need to be deleted? What are things that need to be emphasized and things that need to have some clarity around them? And so if we start with what needed to be added, you'll notice we also have these headers of, is it, does it need to be added in all of the P12 standards? Just the elementary standards, which is uh, identified as preschool through fifth grade, or the secondary set of standards, which is identified as six through 12. So I'm just gonna give you a moment to read through these three editions or four editions, and let me know if you have any questions. Any questions on those additions? All right, let's take a look at the deletion section. And again, this one's a little bit larger. Sarah? Page. Yes, go ahead. This is Susan Henry. I was I wondering on the PA standards past grade one, was there a recommendation how far no, it was just uh, their discussion was around definitely second, perhaps third, depending on what the writing committee decides. Um, but the group was more around. We definitely know that those advanced skills just aren't in our standards at all. And so that would be up to this committee to determine how far we would want to go with that. So thanks for asking that question. I appreciate it. So the deletion section, I'm going to show you as I think we'll just, let's do this. Let's focus on the first two bullets and see if there are any questions around those. And then the other two are a little bit bigger and I'll show them together because they make more sense combined. So any questions on those first two? All right, so um, I did want to add that the the next set here from here all the way down, um, I will let you know that specifically it was these two standards um, were discussed heavily, um, actually not only in the review group, the review group discussed it for quite some time. Um, and then it was also discussed for a long time in the board meeting um, and we had some public comment in the board meeting um, the concerns were around uh, the, the belief was because this is in the delete uh, area that um, we were deleting these standards from um, all standards, I think is really how it was looked at, but we um, tried to reiterate that we're not saying that these aren't important. We're not saying we want to delete them, but we're saying that they fit better. Uh, and when I say we, the committee, not me, um, speaking on behalf of them, the committee really felt like these belonged in the social studies standards. Uh, and that, as you all know, uh, in our previous, or our, I should say our current standards, we have some science and social studies specific standards. And the committee really felt like those need to be put within those actual content area standards, rather than housing, science, and social studies and ELA standards all in ELA. Um, they felt that they would be better taught by the content area expert to really provide that historical context. Uh, they also felt like these two specifically are calling out specific documents, which kind of gets into the realm of curriculum. Uh, you may all be aware that the State Board of Education is over standards and not over curriculum. So this is sort of an area where LEAs have their own choices and decisions on what curriculum and text they use. This is the only area in our standards where specific text is being called out, so to speak. And so the committee felt like that was an inappropriate use of standards, knowing that that is a local control decision. So the committee thought, of course, teachers will still be teaching these because they are really integral to our, um, our history, obviously, um, but that it, it made better sense to be in the history and social studies standards, which 
you'll actually notice they already actually are in those standards. Uh, we had to meet with Robert to ask him if they were already included. So they are sort of, um, they're not written exactly the same way, but uh, he shared the standards that they would be included in. So I just wanted to add those there as well for context. And then Samantha, great question. She's asking, um, she knows nationally sixth grade is generally not in the elementary school, but what does it look like in Utah? So that's an awesome question. Um, sixth grade in Utah looks like both. Um, sometimes sixth grade is showing up in an elementary school and sometimes it is in a junior high setting, uh, middle school setting. So we have a mix of that in our standards uh, historically, even in the other content areas, sixth grade is considered secondary. Uh, even in our license areas, uh, sixth grade is sort of this weird space where it can be in the elementary realm, but you can also be licensed in the secondary realm. So it is kind of a, a space that is included in both, depending on where uh, the community is able to include that grade in their school system. Yeah, you're very welcome. That's a great question. Um, so anyway, I, I hope that kind of helps give some context. And I, Naomi, you are also in the board meeting. So if you want, and, and Jenny, of course, if either of you would like to add into some of the concerns um, or comments, uh, I hope I was able to represent uh, sort of both areas of where people were worried um, and where the committee really landed on, on why they felt it was okay to not necessarily delete, but move them to the respective areas. Um, but yeah, Naomi and Jenny, please, please, if you, if you have other things you'd like to add that you feel like maybe misrepresented or did not represent. Can I just jump in quick and just say from the perspective, so I agree with the review committee completely, but what was hard is we had so much, I, I had so many phone calls the night before, I had so many emails because the there's just, people are stuck on the fact that we're trying to cancel culture. Like they get stuck on these politically charged words. And so you said it so well, Sarah, getting them to realize that the state is in charge of standards. This is the only place, like if you, it's like I tried to say, if you, we were to require Huck Finn, for example, people would be like, you can't do that. So I thought you explained it well, but I will tell you, this will be huge pushback because people get really stuck and think that you're trying to delete history, which is not the intent at all. So just know that if we tackle this, this is gonna have political ramifications and I'm all ready for it, but I just think we need to be prepared for it. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much for adding that. That's it, it was uh, heated is a good word. It was a heated discussion. Um, and there were people that really did believe we were canceling history. <laughs> and please know we're not like out burning documents in the backyard. Uh, that's not what the intention was of the committee. Uh, you know, so, so just know that that's sort of where the um, worries are coming from. Uh, Naomi, do you want to add anything? No, I think that was a good summation. And I think heated is a very <laughs> a good word for that. I think it will continue to be heated, particularly given current events um, the last week, particularly. But I think it's also a really um, builds a strong case for pushing social studies instruction in elementary, right? Like, and I was thinking about this yesterday that the answer isn't to put all the all of the um, the work onto the ELA teacher because social studies isn't being taught in elementary, right? Like if there was that good foundation, that good grounding, then we shouldn't be waiting anyway until 11th or 12th grade for them to be looking at those documents and having those conversations. So that's my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was really helpful. And I know um, added in the, they, they were saying maybe uh, there's a comment in the chat box, maybe delete was too strong of a word and maybe reassign. And, and you're right, I agree. These terms were um, part of the sort of uh, board process. So we use the same terms just for that consistency for board members. But yeah, I do. I totally believe delete was a terrible word that caused the issue. And I tried to say we're moving. Um, we're, we're just moving them. They're not, they're not going away. Um, but that didn't seem to really help the conversation. I think because it came out as delete in print, people were just like, nope, doesn't matter what she says. <laughs> it says delete. Um, and so, yes, I think reassign, or, we are open to other language. And so if you guys have language that 
you think would be better termed or coined for uh, the board to really understand the intention, I'm happy to take that to the board. And I may even invite some of you to attend board meeting, especially you, Jenny, since you are very familiar with it, um, <laughs> to, to come and really share on behalf of the committee, because I think sometimes uh, it comes off as being my idea, even though I'm really just the person bringing the committee thoughts to the table. Um, and sometimes it just comes off better coming from someone in the committee and not USB staff. So, so know that I may, I may ask if you're available to kind of be included in that um, board meeting when we do provide some changes um, and can share that. And so Rachel was asking the process of moving these standards into their respective content areas look like, um, are they up for review and can they be added right away? So great question, Rachel. Um, currently these two right here, um, are included already in the history standards. They're within these standards right here, um, as well as others just in a more general um, way. But uh, we worked with uh, Robert Austin, the social studies specialist for the state to make sure that they were at least already in there because right now the social studies elementary standards are actually being revised. So that one would be easy. The science standards were revised last year, as you all know. So I think that would be a little different kind of process. And we'd have to check in with staff and uh, probably our directors and superintendency as to how we would want to go about that, as I don't know if that has historically happened in the past and what that would look like. So I don't know if it would be an amendment. I'm not sure. Um, so I will try to get more information on that for you by our next meeting. Um, yes, Kami, you're right. It's not even really moved because it's already there. Um, so another, yeah, Samantha, that's a good one. Maybe we can say we're removing duplicated standards because that that is, it's of course, it's not written word for word. Um, but as we all know it, uh, because the way it's worded right now is very curriculum oriented, it um, is worded a little more standards appropriate in the social studies standards as well. So would anyone else like to speak to that? Um, does anyone have any concerns with that? Um, please speak up. Your, your voice is so important to this conversation. I'll just add, having been on that review committee and, and in on that, um, that discussion that that there was nobody in that committee who didn't think that these documents and their and this content was important. The the argument was just that um, if we're supposed to be giving the in each content area the 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 essentials as we talked about earlier, then it makes very little sense to have duplicative content um, in multiple standards. So I like that. Uh, duplicate or duplicative, I think that really helps uh, and, and is probably a better a better way to put it because uh, I, I do think people worry that we are just cutting them and that's not what we're, that's not what the committee wanted at all. Um, so thanks for that, Connor. I appreciate it. Um, moving forward, unless there are other comments, and if you feel like don't feel like because we pass the add or uh, remove section that we can't ever go back. It's not like that. I know sometimes uh, you're processing and thinking, oh, I should have said this at that time. That's OK. Uh, we want your voice and your comments to be heard. So speak up at any time. Uh, let's take a look at the emphasize section right here. And if you could just read through that, uh, and then we can have any questions or conversation around that as well. Any questions or comments around the emphasize section on things that the committee, the review committee really felt needed to be um, more emphasized within our standards? Okay, seeing, seeing either uh, a, a no or a blank stare, which also means no. 
I'll be moving on. <laughs> Uh, and then we have uh, clarify. So I think we'll start with the what needs to be clarified within the P12 space here, and then we'll move down to just the elementary section. So read that space first. I'll scroll down to the elementary and secondary section. Oh yes, absolutely, Samantha, I'd be happy. So Samantha's question was, um, if I could share the thinking from the committee around uh, the labels of reading, writing, and speaking and listening as far as um, strands. Um, she's, she's saying she's, she just wants to hear the thought process, not that she's in disagreement. Um, I think part of it is, I, I, one thing I wasn't surprised to see it come up, I've heard this from uh, the stakeholders uh, before in the past from our literacy directors who are uh, literacy specialists or directors in charters and districts. Um, so I've heard that from them in the past too, that they felt like um, that would be a good way to uh, set up the standards as far as organization um, and that those are really the biggest hitters and that other things could sort of go in a line underneath. Um, and so it sound, the committee, it sounded like was uh, under that same impression that we wanted to keep it um, I think clean and simple may be a good way to coin it as far as here are the big hitters, here's what goes underneath that to really understand what goes in reading, what goes into writing, um, that kind of thing. I do think there would be some, I don't know if bridge standards are the right terminology, but uh, standards to make sure people are understanding that reciprocal process between them. Um, obviously, they're already separated right now. Um, and so I would hope people already understand that, but it could be something that the writing committee feels um, we would have to maybe create some kind of assurance within those standards to make sure that people are understanding that even though they might be separated into strands doesn't mean they're not connected at all. Anyone else want to speak to these or have questions? I did share this with um, some teachers in cash and Overwhelmingly, they um, they got upset about the second bullet point under the clarify for all examine which grade levels it is appropriate for poetry because all grade levels are appropriate for poetry. <laughs> um, so just, I think I told them that I would express that and that we can be mindful of that. I told them that I think that um, it's just to clarify the purpose it's um yeah. of that that's the main chunk of that sentence but um they were concerned about that but they were also very excited about clarifying that world literature emphasizes that it means literature written by groups outside of the u.s and europe so um they were very very pleased to see that oh, good well. That's good. Thanks for doing that, Ashley. I appreciate you doing some, some pre-work. That was so kind of you uh, and really as the conversation. And I completely understand where teachers could be concerned about that. Um, the reason the poetry clarification came up is because it would randomly like show up in a grade and then like not show up for years. And then it would show up again. And it just seemed very um, sporadic, I think is a good term. And they felt like Maybe the purpose, like maybe that was intentional, but we don't understand the purpose of why it's like that or that it just needs to be adjusted in some manner. So obviously as the writing committee, that would be completely up to you guys as far as how you want to approach that. Um, and then Susan had a question, the bullet point about language standards aligning to the progression of text complexity across grade bands. Yes, so, um, I'm trying to remember, Naomi, do you remember what the conversation was around that? It's not coming to me just yet. I might have to check my notes. Or Ashley or Connor, because I know you guys were in that group as well. I think this <laughs> um, I think this is talking about how just like we expect 
the text complexity to, to um, increase with grade level, we would expect language usage to do that as well. So like the speaking and listening, the language that you use in speaking and listening and writing should also correspond with the te your text complexity in reading. If that, I think that's what you're talking about. Yep, that rings well. And I see comments. If not, that's what makes sense to me. <laughs> yep. When we were in the, the, I don't know, what's it called? The looking at them? Uh -huh, yep, the review. About how do you grade that? How do you say, oh, they've mastered the text complexity across grade bands? And so they wanted some clarification to say, oh, this is what text complexity looks like across the grade bands in the elementary realm. That makes sense. I have Does a that question help, Susan? About What'd you say, Sarah? I, I, sorry, I meant the other Susan. Oh. Sus Susan Henry, does that help answer your question? My apologies, I know there are multiple, uh, you guys just have such great names that everybody has them, right? So it's just so popular. Um, uh, Susan Henry, does that help answer your question? Sarah, I have a question related to that as well. Up at the very top, it talked about creating a grade band between sixth through eighth grade. Um, yes. What was the process to do that? Because I, I see a lot of teams sitting down having to try to differentiate, you know, what does ninth grade versus 10th grade look like? What does 11th grade versus 12th grade? Um, I, I see the power of simplicity, um, but I also see a lot of extra time being spent by teams trying to unpack it and seeing what the difference is. Um, so kind great. of where were we thinking with that? Yeah, great question. I think I'll actually have uh, some of the secondary folks that were on that committee speak to this because I'm pretty sure the way they speak to it will be way better than I would. <laughs> Um, I believe, and Connor and Ashley, correct me if I'm wrong, that because the other grade bands were, other grades are banded, it was to make it uniform. So I guess the, I guess the question is, do you unband to make it uniform or do you band, right? If that made sense. Yeah, and I think the, 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 there was discussion about how you can't, unbanding in high school is not work in is not a workable prospect really because of the wide variation in the way high school coursework is divided. Um, and so um, to try to, to um, place, and that there is some uh, variation in junior high coursework in the way junior highs divide that sort of thing. And also the fact that there is very little variation in the ELA standard six through eight as unbanded right now. So if they were, uh, I think there was a lot of discussion about how um, the committee didn't see significant difference between the way um, that was, um, the way a particular standard was uh, stepped up from sixth to seventh to eighth grade that words were changed without those words meaning a lot, like the, the word was changed in order to make it look different. Um, and so, um, so that was, that was the discussion. Um, Thank you both so much for helping. Um, and I think <clears throat> full disclosure, not a secondary background, uh, so be kind. Uh, I was just thinking about this in my mind as um, sort of a competency-based thinking, knowing that our state is really moving towards this uh, in a lot of realms, and, and I want to be thinking about these standards as also being more written in a more competency-based manner, some of them, so that uh, we're thinking a little bit less of does it have to be this or can it maybe, maybe the band would work, uh, maybe the band would be better if it's more of a competency-based scenario so that we can ensure kids are getting what they need. So I just sort of wanted to add that to the conversation as sort of the thinking in the back of my head um, that regardless of elementary or secondary that we're really thinking about that and moving towards that even in the assessment realm. I know Sydney and Liz and, and Megan could all share that even the assessment realm within our agency we're really thinking about how to take a different look at those assessments because right now if you are in a certain grade you can only take the assessment in that grade and assessment group if I'm misspeaking feel free to let people know, won't be the first time I made a mistake. Um, 
but I know that's something we're moving towards. And, and then Samantha also added, can you unband sixth grade since the model is different in different districts? And I think I think that depends on what the writing committee determines. I I, I don't have any uh, any reason to speak uh, for or against that. So um, and then Liz, Sid, and Megan, if you want to speak to any changes in assessment that would sort of add to that conversation of to band or not to band, that would be really helpful. Yeah, that's a good question. So just for an FYI for everyone, we do have um, so our our high school test is as is. Um, so for ninth and 10th grade, it will be the same, the Utah Test Prior Plus. So with, with high school assess or uh, standards, um, there's not a plan to change the assessment for a while, possibly changing ELA depending on how different the standards are. Um, but as far as rise in grades three through eight, we do have a new um, RFP, was a request for proposal from vendors to put together a proposal for us for an assessment that should be posted any day now. Um, so we'll have RISE for one more year, well, two more years, I guess, this spring 21 and then in 22. And then after that, um, we may have a new vendor, but what we've asked people to put together to submit to us is a plan for how to include personalized learning in the assessment. So we have specific, um, mandates and requirements from the federal government as far as what we have to um, administer in our spring assessments, our summative assessments. But um, it's, it's a push nationwide to look more at personalized learning and competency-based education and how to include um, a little bit more flexibility with assessment. So right now we have some constraints with what we're required to do with the federal government. But it is a request from any of the vendors, um, whether it's our current vendor or a new vendor, um, after the spring of 22, to look at how we can include personalized learning in our assessments. Whether that's a timing thing and students take the assessment earlier in the year, or whether, I, I don't know how grade banding would work in an elementary, and, and we do still have a requirement that any item on the test is related to a specific standard. So I'm not sure how banding would work. I'd, I'd have to think about that. But I think the personalized learning part for sure could, could work in our 338 area. Well, and, and I the only thing I can add a little bit to this conversation for that grade banding, the way that um, it works for our Utah Spire Plus, since we do have that band for 910, is when we develop the test, we, um, we had an educator committee create the proficiency level descriptors. And so they, they actually took the exact standards and they showed what, what does this look like at a ninth grade level? And then we then create those PLDs for 10th grade and show the, the growth and sophistication of that exact same standard. And what does this look like at a 10th grade level? And that helped guide the development of the test. So that, that's kind of how it looks like right now for a banded grade level. I don't know if the same thing will could be applied for lower grades, but that that's essentially what we ended up doing for Utah Spire Plus. Are the are those um, descriptors for ninth and tenth grade are those accessible to teachers so they could see the differentiation between grade levels? Um, I, as it pertains to the assessment? Because that would be some powerful information for a teacher being able to make those distinctions. I believe they are. Let me um, jump online just to make sure they are. I've seen them before on the um, Aspire portal. I think it's in a, under like resources or something. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm trying to find it. And if, if I can find it, I will. Okay, I'm gonna put the link into the chat. Thank you, Megan, that's so helpful. Yeah, okay. um, so here's the link. And then when you go there, you're going to see um, a drop down for performance level descriptors. And then you can choose the ones um, because remember for um, this test, we have two, the English and the reading test. So there's two different ones. So hopefully this is a helpful resource. Great, thank you. Um, these are great questions that I really think will help inform our thinking when we're, you know, thinking about how these things are going to change our standards and what that will look like and what 
uh, what kind of things that could potentially cause that we, we want to make sure we think about if it's going to cause a pitfall, we want to try and rethink that is that worth, is the change worth that pitfall kind of, kind of scenario. So I love that we're having these conversations early in the first meeting to be thinking about those. Um, and so I, I love that you guys were sharing. Thank you so much assessment group for sharing sort of where we are now and what it's looking like in the future and what, what is sort of being rethought of. I know we have a whole assessment uh, strategic plan uh, that Darren's moving forward with. So it's really helpful in the state. Um, and thanks James for bringing up where can we find those? Cause I think that's, that's a great piece to add. I will let everyone know that uh, I'm sure you've noticed in other content areas, we have core guides, um, math, science, that kind of thing. Uh, there will be ELA core guides made, uh, not this year, obviously this is focus and work for this year, but um, there will be core guides and within those core guides, uh, now that they are standardized in format, one of the pieces is what an assessment question would look like within that grade. So know that that would be, or for that standard. So know that that's something that will be, I feel like an additional great resource for educators within the state since we've never had ELA core guides. I think people will really be grateful for that, that extra piece. So I'm just gonna check in on the chat box here. Okay, great. All right, so we've sort of gone through the entire report. Um, so, and uh, there weren't, the committee was able to come to agreement on all of those recommendations. Um, there weren't any to report on that we couldn't find consensus. Um, there was discussion, of course, throughout that it was maybe looking like consensus wouldn't be met, but eventually consensus was met after sort of everybody was listening to each other's uh, opinions and thoughts and then realized, oh yeah, actually I, I can see that I can get on board. So it was, uh, like I said, it was a wonderful group to work with. And so I'm so grateful that we could have these recommendations in place. Um, and thank you all for adding your questions and thoughts around these. Um, so going back to our notes, uh, we knew that that was going to be some sort of deep thinking around that. And we wanna make sure that you are um, not getting fatigued. We've been on Zoom, uh, you know, Zoom fatigue is real, uh, at least for sure if you are on these Zoom calls most of the day like we are, it can be a little exhausting. So uh, I would like to take just a short break so that you guys could just sort of step off, um, go take a moment. Uh, I'd like to just take a five minute break if that's possible, if we could come back at 10, 10 uh, and you can just sort of have a moment. So I will see you in about five minutes. Thank you.
All right, welcome back. I hope you at least got just a brief break. I know sometimes it's nice just to get up and walk to another room <laughs> or to not be staring at yourself uh, in the camera. So hopefully you had a little, a little reprieve. Um, looking at the next uh, sort of steps, we were thinking of a couple things. So we could break out into grade level brand bands that you guys would choose on your own. Uh, and if you think that the bands we have broken out here are not a good option, we are open to feedback. Please know that we uh, we don't feel that we're perfect and we really feel that your feedback would be beneficial and only make these meetings even more effective. So, uh, so don't ever feel like you have to hold back. Um, and then we have links to our current standards here. Uh, we also have within the folder, you'll notice we have the ELA standards, which is K-12, but then we also have the core early learning standards as well within there. And then uh, we thought about we could start with the add or delete sort of area um, to an, or add, delete or move um, or uh, remove duplicate, but however we want to say that, um, as starting with sort of we wanted to make sure that if we're doing any adding or deletion, we want to make sure that those are vertically aligned before we start really rewriting and adding clarity. Um, so that was sort of the comments that our team was thinking of, but we also know it takes time to review those. Um, those aren't quick, easy documents. Um, uh, we also have a folder that has other state standards that have been recently revised. So we've got um, the dueling Florida standards review because we wanted you to sort of have a general idea of what was going on with that. Um, and then we also have Maine, Indiana, Massachusetts, and California. So knowing that that's kind of a lot, uh, we certainly don't expect that to be a quick 15 minute review, including uh, looking at our own current standards if you're maybe a little bit less familiar with them um, and want to get those more specifics now that you've seen some of those content uh, review thoughts and concerns and questions. Um, knowing that we have the current standards, the essential standards, and those other state standards, we wanted to make sure that you had time to sort of dive in and look at those. So let's see, Tom is adding, um, he wants to have a discussion around sixth grade in terms of banding and what, and that grade seems to be sort of a special case in comparison to other ones. Um, uh, Tom did join us a little bit late. So Tom, why don't we start with, if you wouldn't mind unmuting and sort of uh, share your concerns and we can have that conversation. We talked about it a little bit, uh, but there were no conclusions that we came to or anything. So if you'd like to start with that conversation, that's okay. Because uh, I don't know if I have feelings one way or the other, but it feels like it just feels like sometimes sixth grade is an elementary grade, sometimes it's a junior high grade. And I think someone mentioned that in the chat already, if it's already been talked about, if we're at a good place, I don't mean to rehash something, but it it does seem to be a weird thing. I've taught sixth grade and it felt weird when I taught sixth grade. Yeah, no, you bring up a really good uh, comment. We, we chatted briefly. So I don't know. I don't have yeah. a real answer. I just wondered. Yeah, our discussion was... A um, someone, I think it was Samantha maybe, had asked um, if sixth grade is elementary or secondary. Um, in the standard, sixth grade is secondary. In uh, licensing, it can be both, um, which also makes it tricky. Um, and then each district sort of plays sixth grade a little differently. In some districts, sixth grade is elementary. In some districts, it's secondary. Um, I'd really love to hear from other people around uh, your thoughts around this. I do think it's a good conversation starter, knowing that depending on where sixth grade falls, uh, I do know on the other standards, sixth grade is considered secondary, um, if that helps at all. So I'd love to hear the rest of your, your thoughts. Like I said, we talked about it very briefly, but we didn't have any consensus. I think um, one of the reasons why I asked the question is because in Alpine School District, sixth grade is at the elementary level. And one of the things that we've discovered as we've been working with our current core standards um, is it seems to separate them off from the elementary school. Um, they always feel like, oh, 
anyway, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. The other thing is, is um, many of our sixth grade teachers are not content experts. Um, in terms of literacy instruction. And so I worry about the fact of banding them with sixth to eighth grade because we run into that realm of seventh and eighth grade teachers on the whole have um, a much better understanding of literacy content in those particular areas. But I would say that at least in our district and, and I don't know how it is in others, struggle with understanding those standards to the depth that they need to in order to be successful. And so I worry that by banding them together, they won't understand the complexity and be able to navigate where there should be. And then my third um, concern are, are leadership levels at, at the school level and a principal being able to have conversations with sixth grade teachers about their instruction and how that, what does it look like when our sixth graders leave um, our elementary school? So that, that preschool six view for leadership. So that's kind of just some of my questions. Great, thank you. Would anyone else like to add? So I would say I've seen those same things, um, and, and I'm the elementary level, um, the, and it, a couple of things can happen. One, sixth grade becomes hands off because either leadership isn't sure how to work with them, um, or if leadership is from the secondary level, sixth grade becomes um, very secondary, but sometimes those students who need foundational skills are just kind of pushed aside because they don't know what to do with them where there's so much we can do with them and so much help we can give them. But, but I would say the sixth grade teachers I've worked with um, at, as a literacy coach, they do struggle finding that balance. And, and I think that point, I, I saw those same things. There is just a lack of that in-depth um, literacy understanding that leads to this confusion about what do I even do? Um, and, it, and it's just, I'm gonna try and emulate what I remember about or what I know about secondary and make making kids independent and when in fact we've got to help kids think deeply and I don't know and it's not that they're not doing that too but I think it's just a struggle to know that balance yes I um, knowing Tom's uh our uh Tom's comment uh in the chat box that Connor and Ashley are agreeing with it sounds like there are some um, I like to call them adult issues that are running in and making them become student issues, <laughs> it sounds like. Uh, and, and certainly we want to try and avoid those. Uh, I don't think the sixth grade standards themselves are the issue. I think it's more around to band or not to band sixth grade. So I'm, I'm curious if people feel like sixth grade should not be banded, but maybe seven and eight, or do we unband 9, 10, and 11, 12. I'd love to sort of hear your conversation around that as well. I, I like the banding. I, I'm just not sure if six grade goes with seventh and eighth. And if we unband sixth, that's fine. And I, and I could probably be talked into either position. So I like the banding. I'm, I don't think we unband nine, seven and above. Six of the issue, I feel like I'm supposed to do what's best for the kids. And, and, and the standards may not be the issue, but I don't know if we can interject this. And I would also ask, because I see a lot of people saying six to six, where sixth grade is in the secondary. Because Nebo is in the process of moving sixth grade back with seventh grade and out of the elementary school and so it, to make it based on what a district does feels patently unfair. Be, it, it doesn't feel like it should make sense. It, it should be why we do it. Now, I, again, if we want to do six, then we have reasons to do six on its own. But it, I understand the supervision is an issue. I understand all that. It just feels like I can't account for every district and every school. And are we now going to mandate the schools the way they do it? No, they're going to do it the way they do it. And there's going to be issues with it one yeah. way or the other. I, I don't know. 
so, it's um, go ahead Leslie well in Canyon sixth grade is in the middle school so we're easy to do that vertical articulation and talk for the teachers to talk to each other but that's not the case statewide so that really does set some at an advantage and also as far as banding for the most part we approach the banding as when we see it the first time like in seventh grade we're introducing them to it and then when it's repeating in eighth grade we're expecting mastery and so that's kind of partially how we've approached the banding so i i am fine with keeping it but if sixth grade is banded into that it will make it look very different and a little bit more difficult for what mastery looks like when they're doing the same thing all three years and how do we break that apart so i can certainly see for not just are they elementary or secondary but also for what does mastery look like the sixth grade might benefit from being on its own I, I agree and i think that's one of the things i got excited about when megan shared those performance level descriptors because if those can be separated by grade level, it's perhaps more important than having the standards differentiated by grade level because they are skill sets and knowledges and you know knowledge and understandings and for moving to proficiency. I think it's more about being able to identify where the kid is versus where they need to be on that grade level. So I think that's something to consider too. If we have those for every grade level, that would be a very powerful thing for a teacher to have. Can I ask a question to the group? Uh, this is uh, mainly to those in the secondary setting. Um, I'm curious if one, uh, two thoughts I'm having. One, are other content areas banded in the upper grades? Uh, and then two, knowing that there's some real consensus, uh, not only within the LEAs, but also with the review committee around making sure that we don't have any redundancy and making sure that we're making we're really getting down to the nitty gritty on what each grade level needs to master. Do you feel that banding goes against or with the grain of that type of scenario? Um, I just want to speak up and I don't know if I even know what I'm thinking, but I'm thinking about how language arts, critical thinking, all of that, I don't know that you can say you've mastered it. And I think that's why I like the banding because it's recursive and you repeat it and you practice. And, you know, as we're having this conversation, I'm a ninth grade teacher and I'm banded with the 10th grade and I'm in a different building and I've never even had that concern, but I can see we're having the concern with sixth graders not being in the same building as seventh and eighth graders. And I'm just wondering what the difference is. So those are just some thoughts I'm having. Um, I don't even know what they mean yet, but I just wanted to share them. <laughs> Those are great. Would anyone else like to share? Um, well, you asked if other contents are banded and I, I would I would have to look to be sure, but I don't believe that any other content is bound, banded. I would kind of be surprised if they were, uh, mostly just because they're so progressive for most of the other contents. Um, so I, I think it's just us, um, but I don't know that that matters to what we do and I don't, know how I feel about the mastery question either, other than I feel like sixth grade is a little bit different because when you're banding three grades together, that question gets a little more difficult. It sounds like science, uh, I got a message, science is banded. I was just gonna say, I, I think there's a, a developmental difference between a sixth grader and high, like high schoolers are more likely to be in a stage of cognitive and academic development that is similar in 910. Whereas I think in this, there's a, a huge cognitive and social and, and, and physical development um, that's happening <laughs> around sixth grade. So I think that makes it unique too. I think one of the other differences, somebody brought this up before, is that a lot of the elementary school teachers are not specific to you know English there that's not necessarily their strength it's more of a general and so there's a huge difference between even what's happening during the English language arts time in elementary compared to seventh and eighth grade where those are content specific to teachers um so. a, couple, a couple of thoughts um with what Connor and Christine said but real quick math doesn't have any grade levels in the high school they go content. So they're, 
So they're not banded, but they're, they are banded because you're gonna have 10th, 11th and 12th graders in the same math class. Um, I, I, I like what Connor said about sixth graders. There do seem to be some differences. There are some reasons to unban sixth grade. I would throw this out there though for Christine because Connor and Dwan and some of, I just, some of us just um, working on revising the teacher ed standards for secondary English ed education. And one of the big emphasis we've put in there is a need to understand how to teach, how to read for secondary teachers. So it's less, uh, yes, there's still, can you recognize symbolism um, and more of that reading stuff. So there might be more alignment down the road between the content knowledges. It, maybe not, I suppose it depends on how seriously us at the university take, take that requirement to teach them how to teach reading. So I'm just beginning my path of the personalized competency-based learning understanding, but it does seem, and even though I'm a proponent of keeping sixth grade on its own for some reasons, I can also see that banding seems to follow that thinking, right? It's like you have these overarching skills and, it, and if you can break them down, like Megan showed us, um, you know, like with proficiency skills or something, show what's required, it seems like that would maybe fix the issues that, that we're worried banding could cause. And then obviously with all that's being done to help all teachers know how to help all students with literacy, um, you know, this deeper understanding so that the sixth grade students who do need some foundational skills aren't just left um, guessing. Always guessing. I would agree with that. And in fact, in our district, we perhaps have a more curious structure. We our sixth and seventh graders are in a separate building, and then our eighth and ninth graders are together, and then 10, 11, 12. But our sixth grade teachers are often elementary teachers, but now they're working on a team, you know, with seventh grade teachers who are more specialized. But reading skills is a huge focus in fact with those intermediate schools that's been a it's been a big discussion this year principals trying to help kids needing those elementary reading skills and we're trying to figure out how to make that work and how to give them that support so um even though they're in a separate building same types of of challenges as some of you have mentioned about not having those specialized skills or them actually needing the elementary background which in many cases that's been a real asset because them coming from elementary they are more familiar with phonemic awareness and things like that to be able to teach those skills. So um, it's kind of some pros and cons in our district. Uh, no, I, I'm really, I appreciate the conversation, um, especially because I'm from out of state. So uh, when I went to uh, middle school, it was 5-8. So 5-8 um, was in elementary school, but then after they moved fifth grade to the middle school, they moved fifth grade back out and it was just six, eight then from them on. So I think I might've been the only grade that they moved fifth grade up and then they were like, I don't know if that's a good idea. And they put us back, but we switched in fifth grade, we switched classes. Like we had, uh, I had a social studies teacher. I had a science, like I, just like you would in sixth grade uh, or at least in a junior high middle school setting. Um, so I find this a very fascinating thing because for me, where I come from sixth grade was always junior high, it was more of a discussion around fifth grade. So I, I love this conversation and I'm learning so much. Um, and so is there anyone else who'd like to speak? I know we've heard from someone, but I don't, I wanna make sure everyone feels like they've been able to speak who has uh, some more comments to add. Sarah, this is Susan. Um, I'm just having an I wonder and I don't even know if I, I mean, I, I see similar problems with third grade to what happens in sixth. And um, not that I'm proponent of changing the band because I don't know that there is a lot of benefit. But what I am thinking about is with advanced phonemic awareness and some of the foundational skills that in the current standards, third grade is not represented. And I know that on our ads, we've been putting that there but third grade is also this pivotal grade of like, for instance, with some of our laws, it is grouped in with K2 or P, P2 now. 
And with some of our other places like the standards is grouped in with 3.5. And so um, even though it isn't about the geography of which building they're in, uh, we have those same types of problems that happen with third grade. And so um, as we have our group divided with third being in the uh, three five, looking at whether third grade is being able to pivot on the from the K2 and have those blended blended standards or representations of both bands, I guess is what I'm trying to say, I think is kind of essential. So I'm having an I wonder about what does that look like moving forward, particularly when we're talking about um, uh, putting more standards in foundational. So it's just an I wonder. Can I add some thoughts to that as well? Yes, Had please. We taught, um, third grade, I felt like we were constantly in this dance of splitting a foot in both camps where a lot of professional developments were with third through fifth. That's where the content focused. However, looking at our state assessment in Acadians, we were held, um, you're accountable to those standards as well. So the trainings don't align because our banding doesn't align. So we're asking to be solid in these foundational skills. However, we're focused in these in-depth trainings on something totally different. So that is really hard area to navigate because I do recognize the different or the, the importance of both things. However, if we're not getting those foundational skills solid, again, to that advanced phonemic manipulation and these um, lower strands of decoding and sight word recognition, we're not prepared to participate in these comprehension skills. So I do feel that that would be worth the conversation. Um, could I say some similar things in the chat box too? Go ahead, Charlotte. Oh, go ahead. I, I didn't mean no, you're good. Okay. Um, just another thing about about sixth grade that I think um, sometimes causes issue or has in the past as a former sixth grade teacher and then also working with um, teams and through coaching um, because sometimes the the words and descriptors the language is different in the um, in the k5 standards versus the six, through 12 standards. And I think sometimes even the, they, uh, they mean the same thing, right? But they just used a different word. But there's a, been a lot of time spent in teams discussing the different word that was used and did it really mean something different? And what exactly does that mean? And, and so as we are writing and revising, being very intentional, whether it's in, it's banded or not, it being, if it's, if we're talking about the same idea, we should use the same terms all the way through or, or not, or if it, if it be intentional, if there is a difference, then we intentionally use a different descriptor. Does that make sense? That I think that might help clarify as teams are trying to dig into standards and really understand what they mean, um, especially for those in sixth grade when you're looking at the elementary standards and you're looking at the secondary standards and how they flow together and what's the difference between um, you know, what's required of a fifth grader versus a seventh grader and you're the one in the middle and how do they band together? So, you know, being intentional that we're consistent with the language that we use and that it's sending the right message. If it's the same thing, we use the same language. If it's not the same thing, then we use different language and to clarify that. Yeah, I think this is a great conversation and Tom added that maybe third and sixth grade are just um, really integral parts uh, or times in a child's life maybe with sort of this transition. They're just very transitional years where we're sort of going from uh, one area to another and that makes it a little bit more, um, We I think we just have to be really clear in the standards and making sure that we're addressing uh, I think someone put it as two lands, like they said, third grade is a no man's land. And so we want to make sure that we're representing both lands, uh, the land before and the land after, uh, <laughs> to make sure that those 
those standards are really addressing the third grade and sixth grade needs, knowing that they're sort of in those transitional years. Um, and, and yes, I do think the core guides will help a lot. Uh, since we haven't had those in the past, I think it will really bring some clarification and uh, detail to the standards that we maybe haven't had for e in ELA specifically for a while. So I think that will be really beneficial. Kind of what I'm hearing is um, knowing that the elementary grades are not banded. Um, I'm kind of hearing sixth grade and, and if I'm if my consensus is wrong, let me know. It sounds like sixth grade should not be banded, but everyone's okay with seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve being banded. Am I am I good on that assumption? Here, hearing no no's, not seeing anyone gasping for air and concern. I think we'll be all right. Uh, so sixth grade not banded. I'm just making more notes for myself. Um, and then we'll keep the other bands and add the seven, eight. I think that will, um, I, and I think people will actually really understand that. I think we can easily uh, share why we feel sixth grade should not be included in the seven, eight band. I don't think that'll be an issue, especially since we have such a mix in our state of sixth grade being an elementary uh, or that secondary setting. So I think that's really great and helpful. Um, I'm gonna sh go back to sharing my screen again. So like I said, um, uh, so we have about, so we have less than a half an hour left uh, in the meeting. And I just want everyone to know, cause I know some people have to leave early that our next meeting is February 1st from three to five. If for some reason that calendar invite did not make it to you, please just reach out to me. I, I'll make sure that it does. Um, we have all of the future meetings here. There will be time uh, between those future meetings where we will give you homework um, so that you can be doing it on your own time. Or if there are people that maybe, I know like Susan and Leslie work very closely together, if there are people within your own LEA that are in this committee too that you are already going to work closely with and you can do some of that together, that's fine too. Um, but knowing that there will be work outside of these meeting times, um, I just wanted you to sort of be aware of that as well. Um, so knowing that and knowing we've had such good conversations around to band to not to band uh, and third and sixth grade being in sort of different realms, knowing that the next steps are we want you to look at the current standards and we want you to look at the Utah essential standards. We want you to, uh, and this would include the preschool standards uh, and that we also want you to look in that folder uh, that I was showing earlier that has the other state standards. Knowing that that's going to take some time and will be some homework. Uh, I think what I wanna do is, first I wanna decide what we wanna do as far as grade level bands. And what I mean by that is small groups. When we break out into small groups and sort of where you want to be. And if you want the small groups to not be so small, like if you think that a P5, six, Forever, <laughs> and then a secondary group are best, or if you want to have like a beginning, middle, end. Um, what I don't want to do is have third and sixth grade show up in no man's land again. So um, knowing that I, I want to know who's going to be in those groups so that you know sort of what you're looking for. I would hate for you to have to look at the uh, main standards from top to bottom at every single grade. Um, I do want you to notice when you're looking at those, the format, if you feel like wow, that's just a really like concise and crisp and clear format. Make note of that, let us know. That's definitely something that even though that isn't maybe the main work of this group, but obviously we want these standards to be really clear. And so if you notice any format features that would be really amazing to include in the Utah standards, note that as well. But we obviously are looking more at content. How did they word those standards, um, those types of things uh, and how, what changes did they make? So going back to the agenda, uh, knowing that we have several documents we want to be looking at, and I want to give you a little time today at least to do that, and then obviously some time on your own. Does everyone feel like you would be able to review all of those and come back with, on your own or together, and come back with general statements as far as, I really like this. I think it aligns with sort of what the consensus of the review committee and the stakeholders has been and the way they worded it is really great um, and feels like they could have all of that prepared by, which is in about three weeks, February 1st uh, from three to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Does everyone feel like they could have sort of a 
little summary. Yeah, I'm seeing some head nods. I so appreciate the like five people that I can see in your nonverbal feedback. It's so beneficial. Uh, so thank you for that. I think I my chat box disappeared. Oh, it's over here. Uh, and Samantha's saying uh, she would vote for a larger group of elementary and secondary first and then potentially moving into smaller groups. And it looks like uh, Jennifer and Tom are in agreement with that. Um, and so, oh, and others. So is everyone okay if we start with that split of an elementary and secondary? And then knowing that sixth grade is sort of in the middle of that, do we want both groups to look at sixth grade? I mean, I mean, that's one way to make sure that they don't land in, in Nowheresville or that they don't land in just one or the other. Um, I think that okay. I think that's a good way. It, it looks like overwhelming. Yes. So I think that's great. Um, make sure I'm not missing out on any other chats. OK, yep. So I think that's a good idea. So I think right now for our homework. So I'm just going to start a new area here. Right, taking a look at that homework message. Is that clear? Does anyone have questions about what that homework is, where to find the documents? Uh, most of the links are in the ongoing notes or in that folder we have the other state standards because that would be a lot of uh, information. But does that seem clear to everybody? Okay, so I'm going to let you decide whether you feel like you would be most integral in the elementary group or most in integral in the secondary group. And if you will lovingly put that in the chat box, just with your name, just type elementary or type secondary, and then we can just put that in our notes so we are aware of where everyone is going to fall as far as their homework. So we know when to split uh, if necessary. And I'll just let you do that for a moment. All right, did everyone get a chance to write down elementary or secondary in the chat box? Anyone else need to do that? A couple more, okay. So I am going to basically leave the remaining 16 minutes uh, to you to start that work. And of, of course, if you feel like after those 16 minutes you have another meeting, I totally understand that you might have to come back to it another time. Um, just be prepared to share out on February 1st. And I look forward to seeing all of you then. And I really, I want to thank you. This meeting was um, so beneficial, I think, for our first conversation around a whole group setting and where we need to keep our eyes open for things that maybe are important, but maybe didn't even come up. Like the third, sixth grade didn't really come up as much in the committee uh, previously. So I think those are important things that came up that we sort of needed to all be aware of. Um, so thank you all so much for your time today. And if you have anything that comes to mind later, as always, email me. Uh, it's, it's not a bother. I, I love your questions and I'm um, always willing to bring them back to the group because your voice is so important. So thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you on February 1st. Bye everyone.